Hi guys, it's Phoebe from Who's Phoebe and welcome back to another Doctor Who video. As you know, I am reviewing 24 Days of Doctor Who where I review 24 classic Doctor Who stories. But before we get into this video, just a quick thing. Today is 50 years since Elizabeth Sladen first made her Doctor Who debut in The Warrior. She played fan favourite companion Sarah Jane Smith and we know that she died in 2011 so she was my favourite companion and I watched the Time Warrior earlier today that's not the episode I'm reviewing the story I'm reviewing is the ambassadors of death but Elizabeth Sladen I salute you and congratulations on 50 years of being part of Doctor Who even though you are gone, you are not forgotten. All Whovians remember you, I remember you from the Sarah Jane Adventures. But yeah, anyway, on with the video. So, The Ambassadors of Death is kind of a mixed story between the Hooniverse. Some people like it, some people don't. So it can be very controversial given the fact that it is a seven part story. That is absolutely fine. I really don't mind seven part stories. To be fair, seven part stories are actually kind of nice. So this is really good. Also, I think it mixes well with kind of space and NASA and like space centers and all of that because Doc 2 and space are like very similar and also you don't really get that many occasions where you get to see the Doctor go up in a normal spaceship now, do we? I like Ambassadors of Death. I know this is a mixed story, but I'm giving you my honest review. I really, really do like this. Now, I'm not particularly keen on the radiation side of things or the ending, and I will explain that as I get further in. The first couple of parts of The Ambassadors of Death is actually quite solid. You get unit, you get the doctor, you get the space centre, and you basically get the first couple of... Um, parts of this story kind of set up the baseline if you like for this story I really like this this is kind of a mix on NASA and Doctor Who combining NASA with Doctor Who because NASA search for anything alien and the Doctor is an alien so I feel like this mixes well with the universe of Doctor Who I feel like it's so uh, it works well if you get my gist it it works incredibly well because it combines sci-fi and space and kind of makes it one and I generally do like that. It's also an incredibly well paced story as well because we have Liz getting kidnapped at one point and moved to a different bit where the ambassadors are being kept and they and she knows one of the a scientist Dr Lennox which I think is really fascinating and he helps her to escape Liz knows him from Cambridge and again I think that gives this story an edge having someone that Liz is familiar with in the story really helps to break it down now I would normally say pacing on a doc classic Doctor Who story is a bit off but that's only if it's more than seven parts if it's seven parts it kind of becomes interesting now, these ambassadors need radiation to basically survive and obviously if you're an astronaut going up there and I think this is really clever that Recovery 7 kind of, the astronauts from Recovery 7 were kidnapped so that, they, so that like until they get their ambassadors back the only way to get those astronauts back is if Earth give them their ambassadors back and I found that an intriguing concept in so many ways because when you take a story like this you expect things to get miscommunication and stories sort of information that isn't necessarily essential to the story itself and I think that this what this story does well is it makes sure it gets its space facts 100% correct Nay, there is a little bit of controversy. They never went to Red Planet. The Red Planet is in the future, like in our future. So yeah, it even though it's meant to be like, oh yeah, this recovery crew is coming back from Mars. That's not actually true. 
that's the only issue I have with it. That's the only main logical issue I have with this story, it not being 100% factually correct. But apart from that, this is pretty much a good, solid Third Doctor story. This is actually one of my favourites. Haven't watched it in a while, and my opinion of this story has not changed. I've never reviewed this for YouTube before, but... But I really generally do like this story. This is a pretty good solid third Doctor story. It has some really good moments between the Doctor and the Brigadier and the controller of the Space Centre. Really love the scene where the Doctor goes up in Recovery 7 to get the remaining astronauts. It's not all the time you get to see the Doctor in a different... Not in the TARDIS, if you like. Obviously, you have moments in this story which completely make absolutely no sense whatsoever but let's be honest this is doctor who i don't think a lot of scenes are meant to make a hundred are meant to make sense in any way shape or form this is doctor who there is parts of scenes in the tardis and all of that that don't make sense but this is doctor who we can overlook the bits that don't make sense because the rest of the story kind of makes up for the rest of it if that makes sense in any way so yeah, the rest of the story makes some sense in a weird way. And because obviously someone in this story is using the ambassadors for their own good, they're basically causing them to do killings. And in doing so, it is endangering other people and this makes the Doctor absolutely mad. So when he goes and sees the Ambassador's spaceship, he promises to the leader that he will make sure that the Ambassadors of Death are returned to them. There's no indication as to why they are called the Ambassadors of Death. That is a question, just a plain question right there. I love that, builds up the suspense. However, I did feel like the story lacked a proper ending because yes, the Doctor gets kidnapped when he returns and I know some gases to Time Lords are particularly toxic. So yeah, the ending is slightly let down, which is probably the reason why this will probably get a lower mark than what it should. The, the ending is a tad let down when the Doctor literally tells literally says that he's got work of his own to be getting on with and he kind of just says Liz here knows how to talk to the ambassadors you can trust her and all of that so unfortunately the ending does get let down by this there's no kind of solid kind of explanation to it the doctor says if you send those ambassadors up you can get your astronauts back plain and simple like that is the simplest solution so yeah unfortunately for the ambassadors of death the ending is a bit rushed and a little bit like there's no solution like i mean yes naturally the doctor stops the television people shooting at this alien spaceship but it's just that bit is okay it's just the way they left it just sort of the doctor going back off to do what he wants to do and going back to do his work leaving liz and the brigadier at the space center to do to sit to have liz communicate with the ambassadors to tell them to get into the in to a capsule and have the astronauts back you know it just seems like sort of they're like oh yeah here's the solution now we just need to quickly fix this end bit and then bish bash bosh boom it's all sorted everything can go back to how it was haven't got an issue with some of that ending it's just that very very last two minutes it bothers me but overall good solid story really generally do like it this is definitely one of my favorite third doctor stories it very much suits the third doctor in every single way it was really nice to see the third doctor in a normal space capsule rather than just the tardis really nice to have some techno babble in this story as well some of it was confusing yes but that's doctor who for you it doesn't always have to make sense liked the brigadier in this definitely a strong story for him Even 
really like the doctor's explanation to why he doesn't have a past when he enters the building because he doesn't believe in them that's why he sort of talks about it he really does some science in this particular story and i really like this so overall i would give this story a solid 8 out of 10 the reason it gets marked down by two points is just because of that last kind of hurried ending if you like so yeah this has been this was a pretty good solid story and i generally really do like it so yeah give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure you click the subscribe button down below and also click the notifications bell so you can get notifications every single time i upload so yeah there's only 10 more of these episodes there's only 10 more reviews left now um like i said yesterday i am doing two more extra reviews before the end of 2023 i'll also be reviewing the christmas special which will be the last video that goes up for, for 2023 and then there's a bunch of new content um i'll still be doing my classic reviews in 2024 but from wherever we got to on here so wherever i got to on 24 days of doctor who um there will be obviously that as well um there'll also be reviews of scooty gut was first doctor who season whenever that will air so yeah there'll be plenty of me there'll be plenty to doctor who content from me in the new year for you to dig your teeth into even my new podcast the doctor's do the the doctor's life podcast which i'll be co-hosting with my friend so yeah just kind of wanted to do a roundup but yeah allons -y.